Yo, 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 it's Anthony Bernardo here, giving you guys a quick disclaimer. Um, I want to apologize due to some technical difficulties. We had some issues with the recording that you're going to see today. Apparently, did not start recording until, by our approximation, 40 minutes into the show, maybe. Um, so it's unfortunate that you're not going to hear everything. But what I want to do right now is give you a little bit of time to maybe talk to you, kind of some of what we talked about. So obviously, things that we were mentioning later in the show, you have an understanding of. But we have Dan Zaborski on. We're talking Pirate Zips. Uh, we start off with the batters and the hitters, right? One of the big topics Jim brought up was talking about Brian Reynolds, how, you know, last year Dan seemed to get a lot of hate because according to Zips, Brian Reynolds was going to have the season he had the year before, which ultimately it kind of normalized. And, you know, Brian Reynolds had about the season that Zips projected him for. Another thing we talked about was Key, right? He's projected to be a three-word player, still very under – um, his, you know, like a league average hitter. I think it was an 88 wins, you know, way to run straight plus at the time, but still about a three-war player. Talk about O'Neill Cruz, how, you know, he's a little bit above average this year, still about a three-war player, but, right, it's not like he's a, I think Zips last year put him at like a 120, almost like maybe a 130 way to run creative plus. So they factored in last year. Dan mentions how still like the chase rate, like it got better, but still something to worry about. Right, the strikeouts and such, which I think he's still having around 30% strikeout rate. Um, we of course talked about Kevin Padlow, 1.7 war for zips they project him at. Still, of course, you know, offensively, uh, well below average. But you know, Dan says that hey, zips appears to like his defense. Uh, you know, we had a troll about Kevin Padlow, and also as Jim tweeted out there, and you know, it's unfortunate we don't get the actual audio, but Dan did stay on the show that. He would prefer Kevin Padlow over Miguel Anduar, who Miguel Anduar projects at a negative 0.1 war, I believe, this year. Uh, but regardless, that was kind of a hot take from uh, from Dan. So <laughs> take that for whatever it is. But, yeah, we talked about a little bit of the hitters and such. Also with Gorski, because of the Rule 5, which obviously he wasn't selected this year. But, uh, you know, there's a lot of talk about Gorski, and, and Zips has him pretty bad offensively. And, uh, you know, Dan pretty much summed up his beliefs and, and how Zips looks at it. It's kind of the same thing. You know, he really didn't perform until this year and this year, very late for, I'm sorry, very old, more or less for the leagues he was in. Uh, not a whole lot of late, um, not late, but not a whole lot of above a ball baseball that was played and such, right? The higher levels. So, you know, Zips took that into effect. Doesn't look him to be a big time, you know, player this year that many people were maybe looking and hoping for to be. But uh, anyways, we we kind of summed it up. Where we're leaving off is, is I asked Dan to maybe kind of sum up what Zips means and the projections, how they come here, right? We talk about the different percentiles and how Dan's more or less summing up how it's taking over. I think he mentioned there's like 170,000 hitters that, you know, are in the database and I think 140,000 pitchers in the database. And it kind of projects and sees where like every person is compared to other players, takes, you know, their their careers – puts that in line with these people's careers. And of course, like the percentiles, like where about they're going to hit. So of course, you know, some players he talks about like their 99 percentile is like a six word player, but they're probably going to settle in about like a two word player and such. So that's kind of where we sum up. So again, I really, really, really do apologize and hate that a lot of the show was cut off because it was pretty good. Um, and I, again, I don't thank Dan, but here I am actually in Pittsburgh area in my parents bar <laughs> doing this very last minute or else this would be up together. But anyways, here's the rest of the show. So with that said, cheers, everyone. Enjoy. is incredibly hard uh, and I think I do a a as less a least horrible a method as anyone else is doing I guess is the best way to put it awesome do you do you have like a Mark Zuckerberg story where you, you just stole the whole idea off your roommates well one of the uh, one of the, the the amusing things is people will sometimes get angry at me for not quoting where I get Zip's projections from. 
and from who I get Zips projections from. And it's been kind of a theme for the last 10 years. It means I've either done really good PR with getting the Zips projection name out there or a very poor job getting my actual name as the person who does the Zips projections out there. Uh, so a lot of times I'll play along and saying like, like you can trust me, I have an inside, I have an inside source on on the Zips projections. So I get them before almost anybody, uh, and I play along. And people don't like being played along with, uh, but that's that's the kind of thing because I'm not I'm not a, I'm not as super nice a person as I could be, I guess. Uh, but there's I didn't take it from anyone. I I mean I have a joke that there's a the Zips creator lives kind of in my backyard and like an oubliette underneath the shed. Uh, and he has to produce projections to get his his mineral yeast. Uh, it's like a troll. Yeah, there's there's now probable cause for a search warrant. <laughs> well, that uh that explained it well. <laughs> um, I am curious on one thing, and this is just maybe like your your take. So we can one more hitter, and then we can move on to pitchers, but. Uh... Zips does not like a one 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 player that the Pirates and all of us fans are pretty excited about and looking forward to next year is Rodolfo Castro, and Zips did not like him too much. Um, so I guess like any insight as to why that's the case? Yeah, I'm I'm I'm, I'm opening his prediction right now so I can give you a better. Uh... Okay. Uh, I, I think what gets me. I was going to ask that too. Is his and Diego Castillo are like identical? Uh, I I think part of it is if you look at his uh, minor league uh, offensive line on the surface it looks pretty solid, uh, but one of the things that people kind of forget about the 2022 season is that offense exploded in the minors, like ridiculously so. I mean. The International League, there were five runs a game, which is unusually high for the International League. The Pacific Coast League, I think, had the highest scoring Pacific Coast League season since uh, the mid 80s. And this is and back then in the mid 80s, that was before they added all those American Association teams that aren't on the Pacific Coast that don't have crazy offensive parks. Mm -hmm. uh, offense was big in uh, the minors this year. And uh, the translations as such are a little stiffer than people might like. Uh, generally speaking, the last two years, the, the lines that Zips translates for Rodolfo Castro, a combination of, of his major league and minor league performance, uh, for 2022, it's 230, 299, 404. And for 2021, it's 206, 254, 363. Uh, so Zips is giving him closer to his 2022 performance than past performance. Uh, but it's still it's still on the fence with him, so to speak. Uh, Zips does have him uh, around a 740 OPS. When we talked 2026 to 2028. So there is projected growth there. Uh, it does have him peaking as about an OPS plus around 100 uh, between 98 and 101 in like five different seasons. Uh, so th there's there's some upside there. Zips just isn't really sure it's going to be right now. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, that was that was. Yeah, no, Jim, that was the that one. Was a curious me. one there. Yeah, <clears throat> like I said, him and Castillo are like almost identical. They had very different years last year. It also so cool, might cool. be a little bit expected if you look at his expected numbers on Fangraphs, which are probably in more in line with what Zips is uh, projecting him to be. Uh, always a good thing to do is if something looks odd, check and see if Steamer has the same odd thing. Uh, if Steamer doesn't, then it might be a Zips thing. If Steamer does have the same thing, then there might be something there that Jared Cross is doing similar to, to Zips. Yeah, yeah Steamer's got him at like a 101 weighted runs created plus. Okay, so, so Steamer does like him better then. Ooh. Yeah. See, Steamer's better than Zips. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> I mean, if you look at his expected Woba, though, he's at 280 which is probably more in line with Dan's projection because we know Dan comes up with the projection. <laughs> right. Dan's yeah, there, there's, there's always some disagreement among park effects. That's one reason I still use OPS plus because uh, the fan graphs guys, David doesn't, doesn't decide on like what park factors to use until like the season starts. Uh, I kind of had to do it now. And then there's always kind of a, a difference in opinion mm. of them. So OPS plus since fan doesn't calculate it, it just makes more sense to do that. 
uh, because then you can just kind of dismiss any difference. Like, oh, it's just a different number. Don't, don't, don't worry about it. I, I did want to bring up one more here, though. And the only reason, too, is just because when this is out, um, the Rule 5 draft will have taken place. And I know a lot of Pirates fans were talking about this guy. We kind of dismissed him. was okay with it. So your projections on Matt Gorski, let's put it that way, because he had a huge year in the minors, right? But your projections have as a 211 hitter, 267 on base, a 70 OPS plus. Um, so what do you think translates to, again, like his big minor league numbers and then his poor projections this year? Well, I think the problem is, I mean, he did this at a fairly low level for – a player his age he was too young really to be playing in the sally league and really honestly the eastern league uh and he's for a team that needs talent desperately i could see why you want to roll the dice with him uh but being that low at that age and in this league with the offense going through the roof uh you can you can see i'm actually going to pull up his translation as we talk here to see what zips translate his combined line at uh but i i i I don't think he's ready to hit in the majors right now. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see if he's taken. Uh, Zips actually gives him a pretty solid, a better translation than I expected. Uh, 244, 301, 462, which is way better than his uh, performance. But that's because his 2001 translates at 186, 237, 281. Yeah, he was one of those guys where like he 2019 wasn't great. 2020 COVID year, 2021, not good. And then, like you mentioned, the age, you know, age 24 season. Then yeah. he, like, really tore up high A, tore up double A. Uh, you know, only played one game in triple A. But, yeah, I mean, high A at age 24, coming from a D1, you know, big-time pro college program. Like, it, it's – Yeah, it's it's not yeah. it's not a really aus- auspicious sign. Yeah. Um, the, the COVID year, I think, was – I mean – Nobody had a good time in the COVID year. Uh, but I think from a baseball standpoint, I think it was especially tough on kind of these fringy minor league guys who lost a year of development, lost the time to lost a year of time to show their organization that they're wrong about them. Uh, and I think uh, that that hurts a player like Matt Gorski and and it hurts a player like Kevin Padlow. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, damn, Kevin Padlow. See, he's either going to hit 400 in the minors this year or he's going to go to Japan and hit, like, 150. <laughs> All right. Any other All hitters, right. guys? Any other hitters? I'm, I'm good. Not really. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm good. Look at, look at Fangraph's the article if you want to get any more information, yeah. people. Um, so moving to the pitchers, I, I would, I will say this on the pitching staff, like, and it was, I feel like zips was the same way last year. This, the starting staff in particular, like it's just full of a bunch of guys, okay guys, just, like, just the guys, yeah, just dudes. Yeah. <laughs> like, like they don't suck. Like Mitch Keller doesn't suck. Mitch Keller is actually, I think pretty decent. Like, probably a solid number four starter. Maybe I think Rowan Z Contreras has some, some upside and he's still really young and zips likes him for, you know, his first full season in the majors brew Baker's fine. Um, and then like, you know, you got a bunch of other guys, you know, battling out for that, that last you know, four or five spot in the rotation, but like no one's terrible. Um, except for Bryce Wilson, I think um, he's not, but, though. That that's my yeah, gripe here. He is, this, this He's got like of, the Padlo effect. How come Bryce so, Wilson? Yeah, Bryce Wilson. Okay. <laughs> right, Bryce Wilson's easier to yeah. explain simply because some of these guys that have decent control will kind of be a competent Oakland A's fourth starter for a few years. Yeah, I get that. He did really, really tighten up the control towards the second half of last year. Um, and then uh, yeah, I'm excited to see what Burroughs can do. Priester, obviously. I think both of them make their debuts this year. But uh, I guess, I mean, let's start with who they like the best, which is Contreras. And I'm pretty sure that's who Zip liked the best last year, going yep. into last year, too. I mean, on a plus um, side, Zip's actually projects a lot more one-win players 
on the pitching staff than last year. Last year, it only projected, I think, four guys to eclipse one win, uh, organizationally speaking. And I think it was like an eight this year, which is which is more and an improvement. Uh, nine, it looks like, uh, although not all of them are in the organization anymore, I don't think. Ten. Uh, but they're ten. Okay. Ten. But I, but it doesn't see like huge short term upsides for the for most of these pictures, except maybe Ronzi Contreras because that one point seven WAR is only one hundred twenty two projected innings. Uh, that's 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 a solid projection. That's a good two three starter. Uh, that's as good. I mean, that's like the if he pitched one hundred eighty innings, he would have an average Jack Morris season, who was a Hall of Famer for some reason. Uh, <laughs> But we won't get off. The, we won't get on that in a on a pirates podcast. But yeah, there are guys. So Rosie who... Contreras is also a Hall of Famer. Is what you're <laughs> also saying on the show this? Let's year. just say yes, and just hope no one remembers this exact episode in in 25 okay. years. <laughs> <That works. laughs> but there are a lot of guys there that more than last year, I think, that are projected to be acceptable, but not and not great, not horrific. I mean. They'll, they'll, the games will end because you need to have a picture to get three outs so that games will end because if you don't, Not always, then everything will go on forever. That's what we keep Josh Van Meter around for. <laughs> they, they have enough guys to get 27 outs. Uh, I mean, one, one of the jokes I had was that, uh, that the, the fifth starter for the Pirates is better than the fifth starter so right now in a few projected playoff teams simply because... They don't have that depth. The Pirates have a bunch of guys, and they have a lot of depth in just the guys. They're like uh, like a mid-tier cable show, daytime television, uh, that they couldn't afford the, the syndicated rights for, like, you know, a popular TV show. So they have, like, reruns of, like, Just Shoot Me or something. <laughs> like, second and third <laughs> tier sitcoms that you wouldn't watch on purpose. <laughs> But I mean, if they came on, you wouldn't <laughs> desperately try to find your remote. You'll be like, okay, it's just background noise. Yeah, I'm not sure Hon- they just shoot me ever. You no, know, no, I'm the 2022 Pirates, the 2023 Pirates slogan should just be yes, just that's, shoot all, me. that's what I was getting at. <laughs> the, tw- the 2023 there, Pittsburgh Pirates just shoot me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I would I would never care to turn on wings. But I would never bother to turn off wings. And that's what the Pirates pitching staff is like. There's nothing aggressively offensive. <laughs> I'm, hoping that, I'm hoping the team's not aggressively def- offensive. It's Applebee's, which hopefully isn't one of your promote isn't one of your advertisers. Mm. <laughs> like, you know, you can go into town, you can get an Applebee's and they won't poison you. Uh, but you're not going to write home. You're not going to take Instagram photos like, look at this. I was at the bees. Uh, no, no one's right. going to do that ever. But on the bright side, they have one dollar drinks that one time. Yeah. I mean, maybe maybe Renzo Contreras is the one dollar drink. Maybe, you know, there you go. got a little two yeah. for 20 action. Maybe Johan Oviedo is the kind of like the the three the three courses for twenty dollars special. Who knows? It'll be edible. Yeah. I forgot about I mean, that. Would you rather yeah. have? Would you rather have yeah. chilies? Absolutely, but I'll deal with Applebee's. Yeah, it's 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 fine. That I they mean, can steal that. Like that's that's the bargain. That's like the whole. Oh, the Pirates right. aren't going to be as bad as the Reds. You know, it's uh... yeah. The Reds are are skyline chili. <laughs> oh God! Uh, <laughs> so like, like you might actually be poisoned there because you're eating the chili. So that's kind of a we'll keep that comparison going, but. They're Applebee's. I and anyone who's from Applebee's PR and is listening, you can totally steal my idea for a logo. Applebee's, we probably won't poison you. <laughs> Good enough for me. Yeah, that Applebee's. works. Applebee's, just shoot me. <laughs> <laughs> Tie it all together. What were we talking about? So, pitchers. pitchers. Baseball. So, I, I guess just, just to get to the person, I mean, Mitch Keller also, I mean, that was like last year the saving grace for, for Pirates fans, especially the rotation. Like, Mitch Keller actually was good. And we've talked well, about the shift as well, think, right? Someone it's, clearly doesn't think that Mitch Keller was good. I heard that. 
There is a dog who's very upset about yeah. that. Like, look, she is not like Mitch Keller. I'm a good boy, but I'm not that good. I don't want to talk about Mitch Keller. Yeah. So you, sorry, not you, but Zips does have him at a 4.06 FIP, um, but I think it was like a 4. Yeah, four point three seven ERA. Um, so I mean, again, like not terrible, but not what last year like presented, especially when they like introduced that two seamer and such. But he also is one we talked about, like talking about the shift, right? We could see him being a byproduct of the shift now, being eliminated, and maybe his ERA goes up and such. So uh, I don't know. Maybe talk to us a little bit about Mitch Keller. Uh, well, well, there's a few reasons why Zip is a little suspicious of Mitch Keller. Uh, one of them is that. His like first pitch strikeout and contact rates didn't really improve as much as they should have given some of the bump in stats. And Zip still doesn't understand why he doesn't strike out more guys. There's a little bit of kind of Nate Valdi about him in that way, where Zip sees the velocity, sees some of the stuff, and and says like, well, why isn't he striking out dudes? Uh, at least you know compared to his stuff. I mean, he's not throwing Kyle Hendricks. Uh, fastballs up there uh, so zips is going to take a a kind of a a suspicious view of him it still has him i mean i think after a couple of years ago people would happily take that projection uh before some of the improvements in, in 2022 uh but i i think i'd probably take a happier view of keller than zips in this case if if forced to choose but i don't think it's a necessarily an aggressively wrong projection Cool, First cool, of all, cool. I, I mean, I think I would, I would take that right now. Yeah, I mean, it's a fine projection. It's, 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 yeah. it's, it's again, it's, it's Applebee's. <laughs> <laughs> so, does it go into anything about a ground ball rate with Mitch Keller? Do we see a spike there, or does it not go that deep? It does, but I just don't print that. Let me, let me open that up and see what it had for him. I can. I'm just curious if it. Really, yeah, it, it, new, does, it, it does look at that. And... Yeah, it has a uh, not so much a pitch change in season, but it does have a measure for things like uh, batting average and balls in play, which is more sophisticated than like, just everybody has league average. Uh, I'm just opening up pitch Mitch Keller. So, what you're saying is Mitch Keller found a way to beat Zips by implementing a sinker midway through the season. It It, it is possible. <laughs> Because there's there's some little you know there's some, some subtleties that a projection system is going to take a while to pick on pick up on. So Mitch uh, Keller is also a Hall of Famer. The the <laughs> problem is he's seeing what's happened to Brian Reynolds right now and realizes he's not going to be able to capitalize on it because they're not going to pay him. <laughs> oh, and and, and Nate Evaldi is actually in um, his comp list. I did not realize that. There's actually a surprising <laughs> yeah. number of of players of that type who figured it out for a while because uh, Evaldi's there. Michael Walker's on the list down mike moore ivan nova marcus stroman mike pelfrey kind of had a year or two where he didn't suck homer bailey levon hernandez uh shelby miller i mean maybe you can trade him <laughs> for dansby swanson <laughs> dansby uh, swanson that's uh, there you go jason schmidt and kevin gosman are on the comp list jason schmidt uh, i don't know if that uh jacob de grom's on the comp list now of course that's jacob de grom before he was jacob de grom so don't get too excited nope uh, Nope. But Keller has a lot of, let's just say, he has a lot of good pictures on his comp list. Uh, so it definitely does see that there's some potential for upside there. You guys all heard him say that he's Jacob deGrom, right? Yes. Okay. But, but I'm going to edit Jacob the last DeGrom. part out. Not Jacob deGrom in all capital letters. He is older. He's like 34 now. Yeah. That Jacob deGrom. Yeah. Yeah, but the, yeah. the younger Jacob the Grom. I'm gonna keep saying no, young no, Jacob the Grom. So you can edit it out. No, no, Jacob the Grom. Young Jacob the Grom. Jacob the Grom was like young a 27 year old rookie. So. Really young Jacob the Grom. Jake, <laughs> Jake the Grom. <laughs> Jakey, Jackie, Jackie the Groom. <laughs> so the Jacob the Grom that had like a 269 ERA in his rookie year. Perfect. Love it. Good projection. I mean, it, it could happen. Uh. Good projection. <laughs> I'm slowly opening up uh, something locked up here. No, don't auto save. I mean, his 90%, he does have, you know, a 5% projection of an ERA under three. So 
If if Good I chance. told you that he had a one in twenty <laughs> chance of being a young Jacob Degrom, would you be too upset about that? I don't think so. No, I mean you I'll said like that. a ninety nine percent. We'll take that. We'll take that. Yeah, don't be greedy. Greedy gets you in trouble. <laughs> Listen, I'm going. I'm going well above Applebee's right now. We're going to Olive Garden. <laughs> Is that way <laughs> above Applebee's? <laughs> I'm yeah. getting the <laughs> unlimited <laughs> breadsticks and salad, baby. I mean, let's put it this way: Zips gives the girl. Oh, I'm not the girl. Oh, God, uh, <laughs> Zips gives, gives Keller an 89 percent chance of being above replacement level, which is a lot okay. compared to how it seemed at times a few years ago. So you're also saying he has an 89 percent chance of being Jacob Degrom because he Jacob Degrom is above replacement level. What if I say yes, then Jacob deGrom is injured all year, and then you've oh. injured Mitch Keller as a result? Silence, Tyler. I don't – you know what? You liked Kevin Padlow. <laughs> I don't want to hear it. Hey, Zip's like Kevin Padlow. I just like the money that Kevin Padlow's agent gave me. God. For what it's worth, Mitch Keller and Jacob deGrom, almost identical wars last season. Yeah, uh, yeah, the the the, uh, the the innings were a little different. Yeah, we won't mention that part. Mm-mm. Nope. I, I I love being mean things with war. I love to point out to Rockies fans that that Ian Desmond's last two seasons in Colorado were by far his best in Colorado, as he as he improved to zero wins. <laughs> Man, you know it's funny. I I remember that. I remember you tearing up that whole entire deal too, but. Because, of course, we know how much you love the Rockies. But, yeah, that was just a disaster. Yeah, that didn't turn out too well for him. <laughs> no, and it, 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 it never was going to. I don't think anyone actually liked that outside of Denver or thought it was a good idea. But that, of course, is the story of the Rockies. See, if you ever feel bad about the Pirates, you can always make fun of the Rockies. There you go, Pittsburgh fans. There's a there's another picture I do want to talk and mention of because this one is like super 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 intriguing and like he just shot up prospect rankings now made his debut last year and everyone in Pittsburgh who probably never heard of him in their lifetime was like oh my god this kid's talented and that's Luis Ortiz and I think a lot of people have some high hopes for him but he does have here a 4.69 ERA um it, it you know it'll be his rookie season but 111 innings 100 strikeouts. So I don't know. Give us give us Zips info on Luis Ortiz. Uh, well, let me let me just open him up. That that sounds like a like a like a weird kind of surgery thing. Uh, the thing about Luis Ortiz is he doesn't really have a lot of high minors experience, uh, and a picture like that is always going to be risky. Uh, he he did pitch in Double A and he pitched decently well in in Double A. Uh, Zips would have liked to see, you know, a couple more strikeouts like he had down in A ball in, in 2021. Uh, but I mean, he's another guy who missed a crucial development season in 2020. Uh, and I, I, I think that if he had kind of another minor league season of that value, but at AAA, I think his projection would be considerably better. Uh, Steamer does like him better than Zips. So you can take Team Steamer there. But I should also see? note that Steamer has Brian Reynolds at 40 points of OPS below. Zips. So, if you take uh, the good, you have to take the bad, and and then you had the facts of life, the facts of life. <laughs> you love daytime sitcoms, huh? <laughs> yeah, I, I'm very clearly a Gen Xer. <laughs> I don't even know if I like things anymore. I, I'm do I like do I like things on the level or ironically? I I never know. I think the yeah. biggest thing that stands out to to me on the Ortiz projections are the strikeouts being less, like quite a bit less than what we saw last year. Uh, Steamer actually has a pretty good drop off too. They have him dropping yeah. off to eight yeah, strikeouts does. per game. Uh, let me see where. Sorry, I'm trying to find my my laptop plug while I'm doing this. It came unplugged and I can't find the other end because a cat pulled it away. Uh, okay, uh, let's see. Zips actually has their rates as really close. 8.08 strikeouts for Zips. 
8.10 for Steamer, 348. The only difference is it actually seems to be a few more home runs for Ortiz yeah. uh, in, in Zips than in the Steamer. Uh, both both are equally optimistic that his uh, walk rate being better than it was in his few starts in the majors last year. It is a pretty good, strong projection, though, for him. I mean, yeah, based off of only having 16 innings pitched in the majors, yeah, it's basically it's, no AAA time. Yeah, it's it's yeah. I, it's not what I would call a negative projection by anything. It's just not it's not super excited. It's not like you know some other players like a lot of Diamondbacks pictures this year. I can see that. <laughs> yeah, I'm just trying yeah, to find like, like his 80th percentile. <clears throat> so the Pirates did sign two relievers today. Um, I guess, I mean, Velasquez, would he show up on the White Sox list? Uh, yeah, he should. So, Let me wait. Just curious um, here. What did he, um, hold on one sec. I yep, could he's there. pull up his projection. Ooh, not good. No, uh, <laughs> it, it isn't good because he was he has exactly. not been good. He was interesting like in 2016, and he hasn't really been since. Mm. Uh, there's been a lot of walks and a lot of sadness and a lot of home runs. Now I'm curious because Velasquez, his splits, starter to reliever, are also pretty substantial. Just looking at that last year. I can actually Shoot. project him as a reliever only. Yeah. What does uh, that look like? That's good. Let's see. Right now, just overall five two zero earned run average. Not great. Four twenty. That does account for fourteen starts though. Yeah. Now granted. Uh, Sorry, I'm just filibustering because it takes zips about a minute to calculate things yeah you're good no 81 innings but 81 strikeouts 33 walks not terrible but also 16 home runs that's terrible uh in in oh scroll lock uh in pittsburgh that's uh overall before i find relief only uh it's an era of five 13 home runs 34 walks 80 strikeouts uh 0 0.3 war 80 era plus of 83 uh, as a reliever, it has him with a 4.30 ERA uh, with 59 strikeouts in 46 innings, but seven home runs. Uh, so it's he's mildly huh. interesting as a reliever. I mean, Applebee's. it's kind of a yeah, he's <laughs> let's, let's, let's be honest. The, the Pirates aren't going to have a lot of championship relevant wins to hold in late innings this year. So mm -hmm. if you could turn uh, a an a guy who has been interesting at times as, as a starting pitcher. He was a good prospect. There were a lot of reasons to like him. He, he does have, you know, a, he doesn't throw as hard as he used to, but he does have a, a decent arm and some interesting pitches. Uh, he's, he's play around with all sorts of stuff. Maybe you do catch lightning in a bottle and he's really, really good in, in relief. And then you trade him away to someone who wants to overpay a closer, uh, in July, I think that there's more of a chance that you could turn Vince Velasquez into something interesting than Carlos Santana at this point. Uh, I guess that's a little shot fired, but I, I mean, I think that's it, fair. No, I do. I mean, he's not good, but there's at least you can see kind of you can squint and see a scenario in which it pays off. We all know they're going to put him in the rotation, right? Yeah, and then that, that's what that's what will yeah. happen in the end. I'm sure. <laughs> I don't know. They, but like like we've been talking, like they've got a pretty good amount of Applebee's yeah. caliber starting pitching depth. So I, I feel like like Velasquez maybe some spot starts here and there, but I think I think he's gonna be but in the bullpen. A lot of that Applebee's is still gonna be in the back cooking. That's the problem. <laughs> yeah, you're right. It's it's not ready to be called out yet. <laughs> it's not happy hour yet. No. There's gonna be somebody there's who the, listens no to half this off apps. who like loves Applebee's and they're gonna get real mad. <laughs> like it's gonna be like, more reason like their, fa their favorite their favorite restaurant is Applebee's. I'm a manager of Applebee's and all of you are sued right now. <laughs> we gotta wait till the two for twenty comes out. We can't pay full price. Two for twenty in this economy. I know, half right? off apps. 
But like that's this is the thing that stands out. I know like last year we talked how just like terrible it was, but like that's why it's I feel kind of depressed right now is just because it is like everything, like every pitch you look at, it's like there's nothing, nothing interesting here. Nothing interesting here. I mean now what, it's it's at least better than last year. Like, at least it's safe. At least these are yeah, major but, league players that we're at, you know. But man, I mean the pirates are a team, let's be honest, they're not gonna spend a lot of money. They lost 100 games in 2022, and they didn't, like, add, like, a slew of prospects midseason or anything. Uh, they didn't add, you know, like, Noel V. Marte and, of the Reds or anyone like that. So there are going to be – there's going to be some sadness when we, when we talk about them. And I think relative to what they look like in 2022 at times, that I, I don't think our sadness has really been that, that you know – effusive everywhere uh, i i think that there are some things to like and just there are a lot of things to not like and i think it's not going to change uh for at least a few years and then possibly an ownership change uh it'd be nice if you know someone would swoop in and buy the team off bobby nutting uh, but you know we, i have a little control over that or any of this to be honest yeah no, you control zips there's like an agent or two who i know doesn't like me because they think that it's part of my that teams being very efficient with their money for older players, they kind of think that's me and Nate Silver's fault. Uh, it's like that we we ruined free agency. I'm like, no, no. they would have figured all this out anyway. <laughs> People weren't going to pay Jeffrey Hammonds forever anymore. Ian you were Desmond. getting one PR deals. Ian Desmond. There, the Rockies are like one of the few places left that does that kind of thing. I have uh, I have another picture just to kind of bring up real quick. Just kind of curious though. Um, so Tyler Beatty is at a five point three five ERA. Now it's not so much that I'm like surprised at that by any means, right? But I'm curious in your list of players, is Clay Holmes a comp for Tyler Beatty? <laughs> this is an inside joke, by the way, Dan. <laughs> Yeah, well, I don't know the inside joke. That's, that's always hard, but I can't. <laughs> but that. but uh, you know, I'm kind of curious though too. Maybe you know. Let's... <laughs> no, I mean, I I tend to do uh, inside jokes uh, without people uh, like uh, Chris Truby heard that we were calling him a Satanist and was a little annoyed by that. Uh, and there's, <laughs> I mean, there's I old time internet. <laughs> no, you see, uh, what happened was this was like on old school internet when we're talking like the '90s, and. People and that was when writers complained a lot about Albert Bell and it seemed to include him like in everything. Is anytime someone did something bad, Albert Bell was used as a comparison, even if Albert Bell uh, did nothing to do, had anything to do with it. Um, so, a writer for Roller Sto Rolling Stone, uh, an editor named TJ uh, Tom Naraki, he made a joke that said, if Chris Truby was found to have committed satanic dismemberment as his at his house, and old writers would be saying, I hate players today like Chris Truby and Albert Bell with their satanic dismemberments. So the joke became after that for years that Chris Truby was a Satanist. Uh, and it eventually got back to him and he didn't know why. <laughs> that's happened before. Uh, the other time that's happened was Felix Heredia. Uh, kind of, you know, just just the kind of a generic uh, left-handed picture. Uh, uh, someone on the internet coined him the run fairy uh, because he'd come into our game and they'd score runs. Uh, and he took, he heard about it and took the run fairy as having a very different connotation that he did not appreciate. Uh, so, so inside jokes are, are fun, but they yeah. sometimes confusing. So I, uh, so I'm not really sure about the Clay Holmes comparison. Uh, so someone will okay. have to explain that to me. Um, I'm well, blocked Jim's... by Tyler Beatty's father on Twitter <laughs> because I got in an argument with him saying that his son was pitching fine, but he's not as good as Clay Holmes. And he he <laughs> went on for a long time about how I don't know ball and all this other stuff. And yeah, Clay Holmes is a lot better than. <laughs> <laughs> We had, don't tell, uh, don't tell Mister Beatty that. We uh on on Usenet we used to have uh, uh Dante Bichette's dad, uh, Maurice, come in and yell at us all the time, uh, because 
nobody had anything nice to say about Dante Bichette uh, as as a player. I mean, no one knew him personally. And uh, Grant Brisby, uh, now at the Athletic, uh, he made a joke. This was like 1999 that when Tracy Ringlesby talked about Dante Bichette, he always used words that you could replace RBIs with pancakes, and it would sound the same because. Ringlesby would talk about how Dante Bichette smells the RBIs and he he flips some batters into the plate and like and Grant Brisby was like you can replace all these words with pancakes so it actually became <laughs> the internet at the time which was mostly on Usenet uh, was making lots of jokes about Dante Bichette and pancakes and eating and Maurice Bichette just got so angry at us for making fun of his son he's like my son does not like pancakes that much. Uh, <laughs> I just wanted to throw this part out here because we're talking about nicknames and the shout out to Pittsburgh Clothing Company for tweeting this out and seeing it. But recently signed Pirate, right? Yarlan Garcia. His nickname actually is the elephant. And I guess the backstory to this is he just likes elephants. (laughs) (laughs) There there are worse. There are worse. uh, (laughs) There are worse nicknames uh, because there's there's a tendency that a lot of player nicknames these days are just the player's name and E at the end. Like, Mike, he's Mikey. And, you know, that was one thing they had better in the old days. They did have better nicknames, both good nicknames and and mean nicknames. Like like old Hugh losing picture Mulcahy. Really, all the Pirates' nicknames are just shortening their names. What about Arson Judge? Arson Judge. Judge. (laughs) Well, I like that one uh, because it gave me an excuse to – to play with the photo AI, which I, the art AI, which I've been oh, doing God. a lot of recently because it amuses me when there's no baseball. Yeah. Well, moving on from Tyler. B. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And Clay Holmes is better if you're reading this or listening to it. I guess he wouldn't read audio. Oh, you're, Never saying, know, you're saying Walter Beatty can't yeah. read. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> any, any other pictures you guys like really want to talk about? Yeah, why does Zips hate Colin Holderman? I don't know. Let's 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 find out. Why do you hate Colin Holderman? Well, because Holderman sounds like the dean of a nineteen eighties <laughs> like college movie. He really like, does, like Dean movie. Holderman. Yeah, Dean Holderman. Yeah. You you kids in Tau Beta Phi better not have a kegger, or there's going to be expulsions. Up yours, Dean Holderman. <laughs> <laughs> Mitch Hanniger uh, just signed with the Giants. Oh, that's interesting. Whoa. whoa. Three really, years, 43. Aaron Judge fallout? Years. Really, in this case, uh, Zips, it isn't so much that Zips doesn't like Holderman. It's just that Zips doesn't like any of Holderman's numbers before 2022. So okay. it, it, that's it, fair. it's just kind of unsure if, if he's improved by that much. As early. And, the Giants are busy. I mean, if they get Hanniger and Arson Judge. Yeah. Hanniger and Arson. Uh oh. That's two outfitters off the market, <clears throat> Brian Reynolds. Hey, there's still plenty of teams that should be going in on Brian Reynolds just to get us way back to the start of the podcast a very long time ago. <laughs> right. <laughs> and but honestly, like you just look at this team, it, it's nothing but. Everyone has like a four four year eight or a four seven. That's basically it. Yeah, I mean it's a seventy win team, but they won mm. sixty two last year, so it's fine, sort of. All but at least hey, from... it's a seventy win team. Hey, yeah. and that Progress. all comes from Carlos Santana. Yeah. Now, if they really want to, if they really want business, I mean, you want seventy three, seventy four wins, you got to start looking at Kevin Padlow. But uh, seventy is still pretty good. I wanted to ask something else too. And, and only because I think most people know it by now also, because it's been about a week since this came out. But uh, a lot of people were very confused on this second baseman you have for the Pirates. Um, not sure if he's been DFA'd yet or not, but can you explain who the second baseman for the Pittsburgh Pirates is on your depth chart? I'm not, I'm not sure I understand. He's, it's, it's just the, uh, the, our depth chart combination of Castro, Castillo, and Ben. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. And everyone was like, who is this guy? <laughs> And 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 Marcano, yeah, he caused of, all kinds of confusion because everyone was like, "Who is the second baseman?" And why yeah, does I, he suck? Yeah, when we have uh, 
like three or four guys and I need to fit that on the little depth chart rather than make a really small font. I'll just combine them into a weird uh, uh, chimer, uh, chimer uh, uh, of a name. Uh, I thought it was easy to figure out, though, because you see Bay right next to him at short and it starts with Bay at second. So I, I thought that that would be the, the, the trick. But I guess now, I know. mean, I, of course, picked it up. Now, of course, when, when people ask about it or these kinds of things, I never give like a straight, helpful answer. No, not you. No. I mean, there was a, there was a, uh, some years ago, I, uh, someone just kept trying to explain to me who the good Alex Gonzalez is because they said, why do you call one Seabass and one Alex? Like, well, so you don't have to tell them apart. He's like, just say the good one. Like, I don't know who the good one is. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, I mean, you can figure it out with context that, I don't know. It it seemed obvious to me. I, I do this a lot. There was I did that with the A's a few years ago with Pinder and a bunch of other dudes. And people got confused. But eh, I'd rather people get confused than me. It, 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 when, they're con when someone's confused with me, that's time that they're not angry with me. Plenty of time for that. Kevin Padlow lover. You know, I'm gonna find his dad and have him call you guys up. <laughs> oh, the, this is, organically, he's gonna find Jim Mr. Padlow. This is Patty Padlow. I'm, I am angry. I, I don't know how, like, what makes Jim the magnet, but I swear every That's father true. on Pirates <laughs> Twitter is like attacked Jim at one point or another. So that's I've gotten a... I've gotten tweeted at by yeah key right so Charlie Hayes has said has said some stuff to me, which is weird because like I love Key Brian, but yeah I yeah. I I I don't I don't understand that because having a parent do that is embarrassing when you're six. <laughs> I mean if 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 my mom did something like that for me when I was six I would have been absolutely furious as a six year old. I can't imagine. I I yeah I. If if she, I mean, she wants to be uh, buried, but I told her once because I was, she doesn't like how I'll sometimes save like the meanest, like hate filled tweets and I'll read them to her uh, targeting me. I'm like, if she, if she went on to Twitter and white knighted me, I told her, well, I'm going to, I'm going to have you cremated then, or I'm going to put you in the worst possible nursing home I can find because do not do that ever. Like, what if someone is mean to you? Like, yeah, a lot of people are mean to me. It's okay. Now, the, come on, man. It's her house, her rules. If you're going to live in it in her basement, you better <laughs> hey. abide by what she says. <laughs> <sighs> I take it you haven't came across Brian's brother, then. No, he has not emailed me. I don't, I don't usually get a lot of hate directly from players or teams. Uh, uh, Brian's brother would hate you. Yeah, Probably. Brian's brother is a, he's a character. Though I think he's on his third Twitter account now. So. Yeah, he's getting <laughs> suspended. <laughs> that kind of gives you a little insight. But no, I, I think mean, Mitch Keller's dad has said something to me over the past year. But some dads like me. Like Nick Gonzalez's dad loves me. Matt Frazier's dad likes you, doesn't he? Matt Frazier's dad likes mm -hmm. me. Yeah. Chad Cole's wife doesn't like me. Well... You guys, you guys have people. I, I didn't know you guys had so much contact with these players. Parents. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's no, they, they, they find it. Yeah. Now, see, now I feel left out that parents aren't getting mad at me. It's like, but I've been mean. Like, why is it Ian Desmond's dad on me? Why is he got on the whole, like, yeah, the parents coming at you after your projection. Yeah. I, mean, I want like Ian Desmond's dad. I don't know what his name is. We'll just call him Desmond Desmond. Uh, I want him to get mad at me now. It's like, well, I feel left out. I'll create some burners yeah. for you. I'll attack you, Dan. <laughs> yeah, the, this is worse. <laughs> See, I could never use a burner Twitter because they'd be like about it would take about five tweets before I start confusing which one is which and and and, and the gig is up. And go full I, Kevin Durant. I, yeah, I don't I don't I don't have the discipline for uh, a secret identity. We'll just quote tweet your zips projections and send them to all the parents. Start tagging them. Yep. Except oh, for people, do that. Thoughts? people yeah. will take a bad projection and like tag like their parents with the projection or their or the player. It's like it's like, dude, what the hell? I mean that 
it doesn't hurt me. It's just being a dick to a player. Like these people say you suck. It's like, you're the one who's being mean. I didn't, I don't, I don't go to, you know, Colin Holderman say, Hey, did you see your projection? You suck. I mean, what kind of psycho does that? (laughs) Yeah, I know. I am tempted to do it. Oh, uh, Max Cranick. Max Cranick was another one for me. Where's he on your list? Oh, he's way down here. 0. 0.5 war for Max Cranick. He's way down here. Yeah, I'm just I'm just opening that up. Yeah, we're at McDonald's yeah. now. We left Applebee's. Yeah. No, I think I said something like I I think I just tweeted like the thing about Max Cranick is that he sucks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, that was that was better than any of the projections. So, <laughs> yeah, Zips does like him less than uh, Steamer, but is Steamer projecting him as a reliever? Because a lot of these minor league starters, Steamer will give them a projection as a reliever, and that okay. knocks off about half a run. I'm actually looking at that now. Steamer, Pittsburgh, picture, uh. No, I need to see the steamer. Six hundred. Uh, it has Cranick at six. Yeah, at sixty-five innings of sixty-five games as a reliever. Uh, so you can actually add kind of half a run or so. So steamer and Zips yeah. are probably on the same page for that. Yeah. I could actually give you his relief projection if he was used as a reliever, which would be kind of a waste for any prospect at this point. Uh, as a reliever, Zips gives him an ERA of four twenty-five. Which is actually a little better than Steamer's projection. Yeah. So so blame Jared. Don't blame me. <laughs> yeah. So if Cranick were a reliever, he'd have the you know sixth best ER in the team. Yeah, but it, but a total waste to to use <laughs> any. I don't think anyone who you have as a prospect who's a starter, unless you're sure they can't start for some reason based on injury or or pitch repertoire. I I, I think you give him every opportunity that you can to start actually let's let's do that for one player so johan oviedo as a starter and as a reliever i think he's probably like the most intriguing part of that sense like he's gonna obviously probably start out as a starter right but i think a lot of us feel like he is a reliever yeah Yeah. hold on zips is auto saving which is okay oviedo okay 36-22. 36-22. That's the start. Uh, Zips, uh, as a reliever, has him uh, with an ERA of 3.62 uh, as a full-time reliever and uh, ERA of 4.44 as a full-time starter. Which, I mean, that isn't bad at all. No, as I mean, as a reliever... If, if he was going to be a starter and give that, I'd be okay with it. Yeah, and it's a useful yeah. fallback position if it doesn't work out. Um yeah. I'll make him, I think, what, the second best reliever on the team if he was a reliever? Uh, Robert Steve. To... Yeah, probably third. Robert Steve. Again, Stevens. I mean, the Scott bar. Deal. You know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Bednar, obviously. Yeah, the, uh, the thing about Robert Stevenson is I know he was a pirate last year, but I have zero memory of that. Uh, obviously, it's, it seems to have been better, but. It, it always happens that there's like a player on a team that you have just zero memory of them being on that team. Yeah, he actually, I mean, he performed well for the Pirates, actually. Yeah, he did. I'm, I'm looking at now 12 strikeouts per game. Did the Pirates fix him? I don't know. Uh, you I mean, know how the maybe. Pirates fix pitchers. I mean, he was an interesting prospect for a long time. He did have some success mm-hmm. uh, as a reliever in you know, 2019, 2021. And uh, then he went where? He went to Colorado, <laughs> but for some reason, Colorado hasn't been as bad at. Well, I mean, at he's actually good in Colorado. Yeah, but but oh. but Colorado actually like finds oh. starting pitching now, which is really really weird. Uh, but they can't find anything else. They get shipped all the dead balls now. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta save these ones for the New York Yankees. <clears throat> Oh uh, yeah, that's that is as, as I said that that is a big story depending on what comes out about that. Huge. I mean, I mean, I guess the only the only silver lining for baseball 
is they are that incompetent that they could have done this accidentally. Uh, most other leagues, I would not have bought it. But, I mean, you can tell me, like, they gave all they gave Yankees games these these better hitting baseball and say, yeah, MLB is stupid enough to have done that accidentally because the whole <laughs> way they've handled this ball thing. And I'm telling you, uh, you don't see it as much publicly, but players and front offices have been so frigging pissed about the balls and the uncertainty of the equipment and and, and how that has sh- shaken out. Uh, it is a very sore sus- pr- subject on a lot of for a lot of people. Uh, so it's really interesting to see how this plays out. By the way, the draft lottery is going on right now. Oh yeah, it's eight forty four. The 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 uh, the Reds got the number seven pick. They were the fourth, so they've they're unveiling the top six right now. The Pirates are going to be in the top six. Okay, well. Lisa Tank wasn't for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get number the, one overall pick again, baby. And then the number one overall pick is the Yankees somehow. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think like, the uh, the Red Sox have. Oh no, the Red Sox are bet are fourteenth. Yeah, I see them now. Yeah. It's actually been pretty close to the order. Uh, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 5, 4. Yeah, so, top three. So the thirteenth, so the thirteenth team is still out there. Oh, nice! All right, Rangers number four. Okay, interesting. All right. Um, Ooh, yes, Pirates, I don't know. Like Pirates anything else too. as far, as far as zips goes. Nothing else really intrigues me to really dive into it. No, well, there's something actually like important going on right now. Not yeah, now. but. It's also gonna be like two days later when this is aired. That's true. This is gonna air in two <laughs> yeah, days. Like, now. Still, we got live reaction on the. If this on was the live, it'd be the, different. Yeah. But did they really get number one pick? We got number one. Number are one overall serious? pick. Let's go. Are you serious? They're rigging it for the Pirates, baby. The balls are Let's finally go. going in our favor. Hey, the, the Pirates can screw up a number one pick. You guys know this. <laughs> no, that no, we've happen. never done that. We've never done that. <laughs> There he goes, raining on our parade again. I mean, he wasn't the number one pick, but is is Daniel Moscos old enough now to have a kid in the in All college? Right, I'm done. <laughs> He's another guy I've interacted with on Twitter quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> For like, oh. so Nationals number two, Pirates number one. All right, interesting. I, I'm actually surprised that Moscos did not get another attempt in the majors after 2011. Well, he seemed to have like kind of found his groove as like a lefty reliever. I mean, who 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 has an e- who finishes with an ERA under three at age twenty five and isn't like injured permanently? Yeah, I mean, yeah, he didn't strike out guys, but I mean, you could. I mean, his ERA is better than a lot of Hall of Fame pictures. Yeah, I mean, his career ERA is two nine six. <laughs> I mean, that's yeah. I'm kind of surprised that he never got another chance in the majors. I mean, he did continue to play at AAA. God, I love that they brought the draft lottery. I love how Charrington comes out for the, like, to celebrate the number one pick. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like I like the name Charrington because it sounds like, like a butler on a kid's TV show, like uh, an anthropomorphic couch that would be like on Pee Wee's Playhouse. Here's my chair. It's Charrington. <laughs> Hello, I sit on me, Pee-wee. Okay. Oh man, I'm gonna need I'm gonna need a uh, a gif of Charrington walking out, fist bumping for that first overall pick. I, I guarantee it's already out there oh, right now. Man. That, that's that's great television. Where's Stilo? Stilo has it already. There. <laughs> Anyways, the Pirates number well, so, one pick. Hey, thanks for the good luck, Dan. So who we trashed we, the Pirates enough tonight that? So you guys have any pick. thoughts about who you would like them to take with the number one pick? You know what? I haven't had enough, I haven't had a chance to do enough research on it. I was thinking a lot of college bats. good players. Yeah, good like a good player. Take the good players and don't don't draft the bad players. Yeah. Don't draft a middle reliever. That that one too. Yeah, don't do that. I mean, there's there's gonna be. 
you are going to have a pretty good college pitcher available there, hopefully. That might Chase be Dolander, fun. Dolander or whatever from Tennessee. <laughs> It's kind of hard to tell before you know the whole college season. Happens. But like he's been really, really good, and uh, I mean, we could use a, a pitcher. So I don't. Know, but that's that's nice. It's always nice to be number one, I guess. If you're going to be top three, I'd rather be one than three. See, I, I like Max Clark because he looks like Tanner Boyle from Bad News Bears, grown up. Who would you take number one? Hmm. I don't know. Um, I know that. Generally speaking, Dylan Cruz has kind of been the more popular one, but there are some interesting guys out there. It's probably a little too soon, and I'm not right. as much of a prospect hound as some of my uh, colleagues are. Uh, but it, but it is it is interesting to kind of peak at this point. Right. It's just going to be a while until we know who should be picked. So I do hope just... the I do hope the Pirates go for upside rather than like a lower ceiling, higher floor player. Like, like they you don't, did you don't want Henry Davis. Right. It's going to be interesting, like their whole strategy. Are they going to do that again? Because the other players stink. Go best of player. I don't know. Who knows? We'll find out. We have a whole year now to talk about it. Well, I guess not a full year, but we got six, seven months. Is this the year that will be college heavy because of COVID? Or is it next year? I mean, I'm looking at Baseball America rankings, and the top three right now are college. But that's also, like, we haven't had a whole – I mean, anything could happen with those high school kids between now and then. Yeah, so somebody asking you who you would take, I'm really putting you on the spot for something that, that makes yeah. no sense to ask for another <laughs> six months. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well. All right. Thanks for the good luck, Dan. Did Appreciate I give it. you guys good luck? I don't know um, if good luck yeah. time at all. I'll put it this uh, way. I yeah, got the first pick. Maybe. <laughs> like, in theory, yes. But the pick hasn't been made yet. Uh, so, I may not have given you luck, but I might have given you Applebee's. I'll, you I'll you might get Applebee's. some good jambalaya pasta or something. There you go. You go to the neighborhood. You won't get poisoned. <laughs> I said <Just> probably. <laughs> probably. Oh, yeah, that's right. You don't want to guarantee it because there's no absolutes. Poison. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing's an absolute in life. Like right. 80th percentile, you won't get poisoned. <laughs> right. Yeah. There's, there, there's a chance, but it's a small one. <laughs> Projected not to get poisoned. <laughs> Well, Dan, honestly, though, I do appreciate you coming on. We have a blast every time you do. Yeah, we always Even have fun. Thanks for having, projections. Thanks for having me on, guys. Hope I wasn't too odd. I can be a little odd. No, you're wonderful. Yeah, thank you, Dan. Thanks. And uh, we'll see you guys later. Bye-bye. Thanks, Chris.